Well, yes, they've been confirmed now by the Senate. So let's get some reactions concerning what they've seen concerning this screening so far. Mark where? But I'm basically going to be parrot your question, Chamberlain. I have with me in the, in the studio this morning two gentlemen, Kasima Fegwai, spokesperson, Presidential Campaign Council of the People's Democratic Party. Ibrahim Modibo is a board member, Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, and also a member presidential campaign team of the All Progressives Congress. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Sunrise Daily. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you Mark. What do you make, or what did you make, of the five-day screening of the Senate's 43, uh, of the President's 43 ministerial nominees by the Senate? Let me take you uh, first, Mr. Figua. Well, I, I don't want to believe that that was a screening. It's uh, just... It's a, it has become an annual ritual. <clears throat> take a bow. Annual. Like uh, okay, every four years, every time, yes. Take a bow and, and go and see no more. That's, see no more? Yes, because if you look at... Did they go for confession? No? <laughs> well, because it's screening. It's screening exercise. It's mm -hmm. screening exercise to provide you know, the National Assembly the opportunity to critically interrogate issues, persons, character, in terms of what they claim in their curriculum vitae. And in, to that extent, help to educate Nigerians to see the quality of minds that are expected, you know, to deliver on any vision or agenda the president is putting forward for the well-being of majority of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. What we saw essentially, but particularly some persons who have Questions to answer with the EFCC, being told to take a bow and go. That's why I said, take a bow and say no more. That's what it is. So it's just like a circus. Uh, for me, you may have some good materials in the ministerial list. You can't condemn them wholesomely. But those who have questions to answer with the EFCC have also tainted that particular list to the extent that the Senate further helped to taint it more or taint them more. Because I was expecting that if it were not a rubber stamp Senate, you know, they would have been able to interrogate certain persons. I wouldn't really want to mention names, but we, we know all of those who are standing trial before EFCC who have not been discharged and acquitted, who still have questions to answer <laughs> and all of that. Why and, you and, want to mention and, and, that, and that tells about that tells about the character and quality of the president. Because from the kind of cabinet you're able to set up, we're able to decide and decipher the kind of expectation that we should you know, expect as Nigerians. But in this case, well, uh, <laughs> the Senate has just confirmed the gossip in the town that uh, it's a rubber stamp Senate. Mm. Well, you have heard him, um, Mr. Modibo, and you, you have also seen part of the criticisms from Nigeria. They have said on this one, in terms of... Um, the president presenting ministerial nominees without portfolios, really nothing has changed. Nothing has changed in terms of uh, the change that APC promised. Uh, this is just same of the same. Um, and um, uh, he's also given his own background, uh, the fact that not all the nominees uh, came there with very clean records, so to speak, at least not according to the EFCC. Uh, what's your take on it? Thank you very much, Magwe. You know, one wonderful thing about my friend Prince is that he's always on the defensive or offensive, whichever you look at it, when it comes to the government in power. Well, having said that, let me say, in the president's patriotic and nationalistic intervention in the process of good governance, the man has assembled very articulate, well-composed, intellectually mobile, and people of character and distinction to make them a surrealist. list. Whoever tells you the screening is an examination, it is not. It is not where you grade people based on first class or second class. No. It tries to remove the shafts from the grace. It tries to examine your character and characterization, the way you comport yourself, your education background, and also your knowledge on national issues. It is wonderful that the president has not given the portfolio because I strongly believe that the president is also studying their psychology, looking at their uh, body language, 
and also trying to articulate views based on their, I mean, the, 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 the answers they gave. So whoever that he thinks is competent mm. in trying to handle one ministry or the other, because we've seen it before. Why we see lawyers going into public, I mean, uh, becoming information ministers, why we see uh, maybe people that read architecture are in, uh, I mean, people that read maybe English are going to uh, Ministry of Works and what have you. You see the beauty of knowledge, especially within the structure. When, when you look at journalism, it is the father and mother of all uh, professions. Because as a journalist, you are an all-rounder. You can do any job, anything that comes to you based on your performance profile, based on your credibility. Are you'll they able, all journalists? You'll be able to respond. But what I'm saying is, there are people that you think take a bow and go. I'm happy that Prince, you are a journalist. By the ethics and etiquette of this profession, looking at the social responsibility theory of the Nigerian media, you cannot hang on to anybody, the kind of toga, especially when it comes to criminality, if it's not convicted by a court of law. It is an aberration. Yeah, but you cannot, you yes, you Just, cannot. Indeed, yes. indeed. Um, but isn't it only proper that if you have a case to answer, that you clear your name before you are reappointed minister? No, but look at the body language of Mr. President. A man whose decision to venture into this politics is born out of his patriotic desire to positively respond to the generation challenges of this country. You know, you and have, now, if yeah. you look at Mark, you, you I, have I, raised a number of issues yes. before we, you know, put but what I'm saying is, if it comes to allegation, you have allegation, said that this is not a place where they go to grade people. Uh, some people might disagree. They might say that there is a reason why it is called a screening. Uh, a screening is, I mean, he pointed out to to test your capabilities. You also said that said as much. Yes. To see your knowledge on national issues. Exactly. And if you're going to be a minister. People will say, it isn't, isn't it only proper that if you're going to be a minister in a certain place, that people have an idea of where it is that you're going to, so that they can tailor their questions to know whether you actually have the capacity or you have a plan that could bring about a turnaround? Uh, because your government is promising change, and now the next level. People are looking for what would take them to the next level. Isn't that right? Yes. All I'm saying is, Magwe, the president in his wisdom, has assembled this who whom he thought or whom he thinks will be able to respond to his own principles of modus operandi of what a government entails. And I believe that fair hearing is a canon, or, or better still, is one of the principles of, of, of life of, of uh, any uh, country. He's a lawyer. I'm not. Fortunately. I'm not a lawyer. Oh, fine. <laughs> if you are not, but the issue of fair hearing, even if you accuse a person, of corruption, if it is not proven before a court of law, you cannot hang that like a sort of democracy on, on, on the neck of anybody. It's wrong, journalistically, ethically, and in fact, constitutionally, you cannot. So therefore, all these issues of pointing accusing fingers to these people, they cannot substantiate it. The only thing is whether for a court of law, if they are found guilty, now you can hang on to the necks of these people. What I'm saying is, the minimum standard of being a minister in this country is secondary school certificate. Tell me one single person among all the ministerial nominees that has failed below poverty line in terms of articulation of ideas, in terms of intellectual capacity, in terms of mobility when it comes to professional conduct. Mm. Now, that's a question I want to pose to you. I mean, he says that these people are, well, above board. They are, they've also shown their intellectual competence. Uh, they, they seem to have spoken pretty well for themselves. And the Senate is, uh, is made up of both uh, the ruling party and the opposition, if they had any objections, wouldn't they have pointed it out? No, okay. this is just the cross we have to carry. As a country that is still detained by incompetence and crass incapacity to actually drive the wishes and aspirations of Nigerians. It's quite unfortunate, you know. Are you just saying this because it is convenient? No, 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 no. Because no, let please. us look at, in, in fairness, yeah. let us look at um, our history since even 1999. Um, very rarely have we heard that, in fact, I have not heard it. I only heard it recently uh, that, and I think it was the governor of Kaduna State, the current governor of Kaduna State, who presented his commissioners with their portfolios. Very rarely would you even see state governors present their commissioners 
with the portfolios that they want them to, 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 Ma, to, well, to, we to have, enter. We should have allowed Just a moment. Land, Let yes. me finish. Okay. And then also, uh, even the president since 1999, this seems to be a tradition of sorts now. Uh, do you think that it will be fair to, to just say that this administration is, is giving us same of the same? Maybe they're following you some are, sort of tradition. You, you've, you've made me to miss the stream of my thought. Because on a good day, mm -hmm. Modibo is very articulate, but you saw that he was almost like battling with himself to explain the kind of cul-de-sac that he finds himself with defending this kind of process. When a party comes on board, don't forget I was once a member of the APC, and you preach change, it means you are going to take a departure from what used to be a tradition, like you said, in so many areas, in terms of attitudinal orientation to governance, in terms of to anti-corruption fight, in terms of project delivery, in terms of accountability, probity, and equitability of reforms, in, in terms of what you want to do. That change was a mantra that brought this government in 2015. I do not expect that the same party that preached change will be taking inspiration from previous tradition as a basis to defend its own you know, process of not putting into practice that change. That's one. Yeah, it Secondly, depends, wouldn't it depend on whether or not they see the tradition as bad? Some people will say not a tradition is a bad. See, if it ain't broke, don't fix you see, it. You see, there comes a time in the life of a nation mm. that when people have been agitating for portfolios to be tied to nominees, it should naturally give you an opportunity for you to interrogate such a person based on the portfolio he's been given. What you saw in the, in the Senate was just come take a bow. About 70% of them was take a bow and they, and, 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 and they leave. And in that process, we are unable to, we are unable to critically examine them, interrogate them, and put them to test. Look at, I give you a typical scenario. When a president preaches anti-corruption, the perception of the public must be right so that he can get his anti-corruption initiative right. But in this case, where you have a president preaching anti-corruption, and we have persons who are standing trial, you know, with EFCC and have cases to answer. Senator Akpabio is one. There's an allegation of 108 billion naira misappropriated. He's standing trial with EFCC. Uh, Timmy Pressiva is another. In fact, Kayamu was his prosecutor under EFCC, 90 billion. You heard that they returned 48 houses to him. Uh, uh, Uche Oga was accused of subsidy scam. And quite a few others. I'm not being, going to give a blanket condemnation to all the minister, ministerial nominees. No. There are quite some decent, you know, refined gentlemen there who have, you know, paid, made their mark in, their private, in the private sector. But I'm saying that as a government that preaches anti-corruption as a basis of engaging governance, such a, a government must live above board in the names of persons and character of persons they are putting forward as ministerial, as ministers that will preside over our collective patrimony. It is not just a matter of mouthing it or sloganeering it, but from what we have seen with this list, I have taken my conclusion and nobody can convince me anymore that this government is just hypocritical about corruption, is just selective amnesia, is just a witch hunt, and they have gotten it wrong from the one. Because if you ask me, if I will President Buhari feel sitting in the chambers, in the executive chambers, and sitting in looking into the eyes of some of these persons who have cases to answer in the FCC, what morality will he have to accuse anybody? You don't need to go and bring Desi from, from, from UK say so you want to try Desi and all of that. When there are people right under your nose, and you cannot, you know, uh, having, you cannot handle them. They are having their day in court. You see, you they see, are, you they, see, they have been you accused see, you, have already, you, have already, you have already acquitted them when you see, see them worthy of presenting themselves as minister because the understanding is that security will have to do screening of your nomination before you come to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. But of course, we know these days, screening is more or less like party-party business because they screen... Uh, Kemi Ade Oshun, 
And they didn't, they, the security didn't see that she didn't have a uh, certificate, NYC certificate. They screened uh, Adiba Oshitu communications. They didn't see that she, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go for NYC. So what kind of screening? This is just a matter of, you know, gangs of sinner forms. Kind mm. of. You have heard him. What, what's your response to that? You know, the beauty of this, my wonderful friend, is that <laughs> he is one person that is finding difficulty in trying to stabilize. He goes from one, from one party, jumping to the other. So he finds it difficult to write and think with the philosophy and principles of all this party structure. And, you know, please, whenever I start talking... No, 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 no. I, I, I think it's, so, uh, this is not about him. Okay. It's about, let's, me. It's let's about the issues. issues. Let's, let's forget about this issue. What I'm saying is central to what he's talking about. Whoever knows President Muhammad Dubari knows that this is a man that is out to look at the issues confronting Nigeria from the perspective <laughs> of a nationalist and a patriot. He has done that. And everybody mm. knows that Mr. President does not, he, he, he opposed corruption in every no. uh, uh, material particular. Now, as a man whose decision to venture into politics, if you look at the kind of humane structure that he has, the principles and humane structure, is born out of his own feelings that, look, people should be able to be in sync with the idea, or, I mean, with, with, with the principles of law. He is a law ad adherent. He believes that if you are accused, except if it's proved abortive, I mean, it's proved beyond reasonable doubt, you are still a suspect. And therefore, there is no law that says that once there's an accusation... Not a suspect. No, no, no. What I'm saying is if there is allegation... I'm not saying he's a suspect. No, he's if there is, a suspect. I say if there is allegation... <laughs> If an allegation, look, give a messenger 10, 10 naira every month. Go and get accountability within the year. You'll find you, you, there might be allegations of, of uh, diverting uh, this thing somewhere. So therefore, we believe that this allegation is a traditional thing within Nigerian polity. Now, in every parameter of democratic practice, one thing that we have to look at is, Mark Way, have has the president done a good choice? Yes. Virtually almost everybody there has proved your honorable doubt among the ministers with distinction. They are people, they're all university graduates who have performed and have also, you know, rendered service to this country beyond the limits of uh, people's imagination. We saw what the previous governments have presented as ministers. As ministers. Some people who are just, I mean, jokers and we see uh, coupon clippers. People that hardly pay their dues within the within the i mean the the, the modus operandi of a country being called nigeria but here we have a president that feels that he has something to deliver and therefore these last four years i strongly believe is the four years of reformation is the four years of looking at the country from a wider perspective so as to deliver dividends of democracy that's why these were two ministers i strongly believe will be giving them ministerial positions based on their competencies I am sure the president has not taken these people for cycle shows. He has taken them to the National Assembly so as to, I'm sure he must have formed a team watching all the screenings so that they plot the graphs I, I'm based sorry. on... I, I'm sorry I didn't get you there. Yes. Are you saying that the president was waiting to watch the ministerial screening before he decides no, what it's, portfolio it's he an wants added, to assign to the people he's nominated? You see, why are we having screening? If you ask yourself, Mark, we're having screening... So as to look at the competencies of people. We are not having screening because you want to say this first class or second class. No. The grading should be based on the profile, your articulation, the way, you know, you respond, spontaneously respond to issues of national development. And therefore, of all the ministers, I can tell you that they are very competent, they are people of character, and I strongly believe <laughs> that to be in sync with the philosophies and policies of President Muhammad Buhari under this last session, I am sure he has been able to get square pigs that will fix in square holes. Therefore, for now, let us look at, let us contextualize the issue. How are we going to ascertain that when you say you are very sure the president has found square pe pegs and square holes? Shouldn't that have been proven at the screening uh, by the kind of questions that will be posed to them based on if people know where it is that they are going to? Mark, we... One thing we should understand is screening, as I've said, is my own personal opinion. I strongly yeah. believe that and I hold it tightly to my heart. Screening is not a place where you 
grade people based on first class or second class. What screening, exactly is a screening for you? Screening yeah. for me yeah. is a process of trying to look inwardly into your own attributes by way of trying to bring out the best out of you. Mm. That is to show that, look, one, you have credibility, two, you have the educational background, three, you have character, four, you have professional mobile in terms of articulation, and also you serve the nation meritoriously. And I strongly believe that this process has been made by almost all the nominees. It doesn't mean that when they say screening, it doesn't mean that you should fail anybody. Or you should weed out, only, you can only weed out people if you know that they failed in terms of their education qualifications, in terms of even the credibility. If you have your presented school certificate and you've not gone to secondary school, like some of these PDP governors that we have, you find yourself in a very tight situation. Mm. So therefore, screening is meant to remove the shafts from the grains. Can, can I just quickly read this? I think it's extremely important. The yes. definition of screening, the dictionary definition of screening says, the evaluation or investigation of something as part of a methodical survey to assess suitability for a particular role or purpose. Good. If we're going to be examining suitability for a particular yeah. role or purpose, purpose yes. how do we do that without portfolio? We're taking a bow. No. We're See, even taking a bow. Let me tell you, Mark, if you look at all these issues, the definition of, of uh, screening there has met everything that I've said. It is removing the shots from the grace and then trying to articulate, get the viewpoints of people from your performance profile. Okay. Then Therefore... Let, let's leave it. Let's, let's yes. assume without considering to you. Let yes. me quickly take uh, of Mr... Afegwa on you know what he's talking about taking a bow. The the the, the Senate itself has defended uh, the reason why it asks his own ministers to take a bow. And you know that the Senate always sticks to traditions, so to speak. They believe that these are people who have served in the National Assembly. They say that these people they know them. They have competence uh, from uh, their relationship that or the relationship that they have had with the National Assembly. Uh, isn't that grounds enough? Uh, for them to ask their colleagues or their former colleagues, as the case might be, to take a bow and go. The last time I checked, uh, Timmy Prestiga was never a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And if my position is right, which is, I do not understand why such a man should be told to take a bow. What do you have against him? No, because, you see, I expected, mm -hmm. based on your definition of screening now, that nominees will be asked specific questions. Mr. Timmy Presiva. Sorry to interrupt you. We cannot be you know, particular about a candidate. But yes. just, I didn't want to mention yeah, yeah, the so, Sorry to, to, sorry, sorry to uh, uh, interrupt to. you. Yes. The, the thing is this. The Senate always, they guard their rights jealously. They guard their rules jealously. Uh, and they always reserve the right to make their own rules and reserve the right uh, to, 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 to decide those who enjoy the privileges that they extend to them. If Timmy Presiva was deemed worthy, isn't it within the prerogative of the Senate to decide whether or not he was going to enjoy it? You see, the, the Senate is not there to serve its own whims and caprices. The Senate is an elected Senate that is there to make laws for the good governance of the country. And in the process of carrying out this uh, constitutional responsibility of screening candidates that will fit into ministerial positions that will execute the laws that they will be making, mm -hmm. I expect them to critically interrogate persons based on their antecedents, mm -hmm. based on who they are, based on their character, and find whether it suits first the mentality of the country as we are now, mm. presently going through difficulties, what are those persons who will be able to deliver on the wishes and aspirations of majority of Nigerians? Mm. But you they, see, they didn't deliver on that. No, they didn't do anything. They just, they just went, came out and said, "Take a bow and and go." I'll see no more. You see, it took so, them so, five days. I mean, I think it's only fair. Fair is fair. It took them five days to screen forty. No, that nominees. is no screening. That was no screening. It okay. took them five days to see the faces of the nominee. Okay, Mark, if you say so. Uh, yes. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we are out of time. Okay, but unfortunately, let me correct we, the wrong impression. I mean, the there's, no, you there's no impression. Um, that I'm you are correct in here. Timmy Prius Silva was a member of Bayasa State House. Of it is not a Senate. Okay, that's not a Senate. it doesn't matter. Gentlemen, 
us. We're out of time. PDP status. We're going to say to you both. Senator, please. Senator, it's different from this. PDP status. We're out of time. We're taking a break at this moment. Kasi Mabiyo, we're going to say to you both. PDP status. We're out of time. We're taking a break at this moment. We're taking a break at this moment. Kasi Mafegwa is spokesperson presidential Some campaign of council yeah. of the PDP. Yeah. And Ibrahim Modibo yeah. is a board member at Buja Broadcasting Corporation and also a member of the presidential campaign team of the APC. Well, that's it for this segment. So, yeah, right, continues in a moment. Please stay with us. I don't